I'm Sarah Gore and this is Open House NYC. This week some of the biggest names in style and design take us into their own homes. We tour a disco chic Hell's Kitchen property with owner and designer Tracy Stern. A designer's unique live work loft in the Flower District. Design and lifestyle maven Jonathan Adler shows us around his unique Greenwich Village abode. But first Carson Cressley shows us around his Park Avenue pad. Park Avenue is right here at my feet so um Hi guys, sure, yeah, keep it down. I'm making a TV program up here. Neighbors. Welcome to Open House NYC. This week's show is all about design stars in the city showing off their own homes. When media personality, author, and fashion insider Carson Cressley is not dishing design advice on TV, magic, he retreats to his impeccably curated refuge on Lower Park Avenue. Let's join him for a closer look. Well, hello, and welcome to my home. I've always wanted to say that. Anyway, my name's Carson Cressley from Bravo's Get a Room with Carson and Tom, and this is my very own apartment right here in New York City on Park Avenue, the not super fancy part of Park Avenue, because I'm on cable. It's a Regency style, which is kind of like a lot of mirrored furniture, kind of a little bit glitzy, but I've toned it down with some natural materials and some browns and some natural woods. So I call it Kentucky Regency. Let's go snoop around. I'll even show you the inside of my medicine cabinet. I know you do that at parties. Okay, so I am a maximalist, but when you have a lot of stuff, you kind of have to have it organized. I decided to build these built-in bookshelves. You could access the kitchen from here, and I was like, who needs a breakfast bar? How about a real bar? So I just did a little piece of marble. It's great for Emmy storage. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. If you put an Emmy in front of a mirror, it looks like you have two. And then the fun detail, I think, on this, I did a nail head trim, and it really created kind of a great Art Deco kind of detail. And then you overlook the living room, which we're going to take a look at next. All right, so here is my living room, and basically the entire apartment is my living room because it's all one open space. I love that it's a sunken living room. I did a sandblasted leopard rug, so it kind of looks a little threadbare and a little worn. Sofa, I kept really basic. It's a big investment. You want that to be kind of your little black dress, so get the best quality you can afford. And to keep the space from getting too formal, I just decided to do two fun accent chairs. And then basically everywhere, I just have stuff that I love and that I found on my travels. Like these urns, were they're plastic. They're not even expensive. They were meant for outside. But I just thought they looked interesting, so it just creates moments and conversation pieces and it distracts them because I haven't dusted in three years. All right now let's go slip into something more comfortable and see the bedroom. I feel like I should have made you a drink. Okay so oh on the way to the bedroom is this room I think they call it the um what is it a kitchen. I very rarely am in here. I have a wall of cabinets over here that you think, wow, you have tons of storage. Basically, I did dummy front cabinets and then they wrap around into the bedroom and give me all of this built-in drawer space because I have a lot more designer underwear than I do of pots and pans. Smart. All right, welcome to my boudoir, y'all. So um, this is where the mediocrity happens, okay? All the magic. I like to keep it pretty serene. So I did grays and browns. It's quite masculine, actually. Go figure. I wanted to create this nubby kind of silk look from my headboard. I wanted to wrap the whole room in it. It would be really expensive to upholster a room. You can do it, but instead I just faux painted it, which was much cheaper. I have a lot of mirrored furniture, so I can roll out of bed and see if I have spinach in my teeth. Nope, I'm good. And then in here is my master bath. I always wanted a chandelier in my bathroom. I was channeling my inner Liberace. And then I lacquered the walls in this beautiful pink because everybody looks good in pink. If you um, see somebody in a pink shirt, they always look like really rested and fresh. So same effect, so I can get ready in here. And then I go out into the real world and people are like, ma'am, put on some makeup. 
Okay, it's my favorite part. It's not even inside, it's outside. Having an outdoor space in New York is like a dream. I love having this. I can take in the view, the Chrysler building. Park Avenue's right here at my feet. So, um, hi guys. Sure, yeah, keep it down. I'm making a TV program up here. Neighbors. All right, that wraps up the tour. Thanks for visiting me in my home. All right, I'm gonna leave you out here. Enjoy the view. You tell them, Carson. All right, coming up after the break, we are in Greenwich Village with design and lifestyle maven Jonathan Adler. It's funny, I live very clean, but I decorate very, very dirty. We'll see you in just a few. Welcome back. Now, although Jonathan Adler might humbly call himself just a potter, this author and businessman has built a lifestyle empire based on his unique vision that serious design doesn't need to take itself too seriously. The Greenwich Village home he shares with his husband, Simon Doonan, is a beautiful ode to this vision. See for yourself. Hi, I'm Jonathan Adler. Welcome to the Greenwich Village apartment I share with my husband, Simon Doonan our adorable rescue mutt, Foxy Lady, and I'm gonna show you the results of an epic renovation we just did. Come check it out. So this is the foyer, and I think the spirit of the apartment starts in the foyer like an introduction to an essay. I make a lot of stuff, like I make a lot of stuff from lucite to needlepoint pillows to furniture. The mirror in the foyer is one of the things I didn't create, but it's one of my favorite things in the apartment. It's a very classic starburst mirror, but it's just made with two by fours. Each room has a different spirit and they all start here. We are here in my living room. It was built at the turn of the last century, so the architecture is very, very grand and traditional and has 14-foot barrel-vaulted ceilings, but we contrasted that with a very, very bold and modern decor. The foundation of everything starts with the floor, and I am having a real Vans checkerboard moment. Are you? If not, you will be or should be soon. As much as I love color, I think people sometimes misinterpret my work as being just full of saturated color, and it really isn't. It's pops of color set against a foundation of black and white. You'll see lots of eyes in our apartment, because wherever I am, I like to see eyes staring back at me. Above the mantle are these incredible Italian Murano clown faces, and I think sometimes things that can look a little witty and fun can actually be profound and substantive in their own way. I am first and foremost a potter and a craftsman. Almost everything in here is made by moi, including this gigantic lucite purple foot. Anybody who says you shouldn't have a foot on the table is incorrect. It's funny, I live very clean, but I decorate very, very dirty. And I think that's perfectly captured by my lucite pills. How groovy are these? They're big, they're bold, they're provocative. Interior design and design in general is an opportunity to let your freak flag fly. The living room is where all the fun in this house happens, but let me show you where the work is in Simon's office just off the living room. So we're here in Simon's office. Simon, as you all should know, is a brilliant writer, and this is where the actual writing happens. And I wanted to create an office that was a reflection of who he is. He's really a swinging 60s, Carnaby Street, London kind of a guy. And I think this office captures it. The brown walls are strangely kind of masculine. Each piece in the salon style wall really means something to us, whether it's this incredible portrait of Simon by Happy Menacal, or a portrait of our dearly departed dog, Liberace. And you'll see a lot of Lucite stuff in our apartment. The sculptures are a Roman god and goddess. They look incredible with the light going through them. This is not only Simon's office, it's also the guest room. It's kind of a one night guest room, like you can crash on our sofa in privacy and luxury, but then you gotta like get out in the morning. So this is where Simon works. When we come back, I will show you where we eat. Stick around, coming up just after the break, more with Jonathan. We'll be right back.
Welcome back everyone. Let's rejoin Jonathan Adler for more in his Greenwich Village abode. This is our dining room. I wanted every room to have kind of its own spirit. And I guess the spirit for this room is light, ethereal, surreal, dreamy. It starts with the wallpaper, which is this incredible mylar with white that kind of just creates the sense of a glow in this room. And it's full of weird, trippy, ethereal things, including these Pedro Freideberg hand chairs that are gilded, an oval Florence Knoll marble table. There's a Gothic mirror in the corner with a ceramic poodle staring into it, contemplating life, I suspect. On our sideboard is this incredible head of print that came from one of Simon's iconic Barney's windows. It stares at us hauntingly as we eat our granola in the morning. And when the dining room was all done, Simon looked at it and said, you know, there's something a little bit too bourgeois about this room. We have this incredible break front done in like a lacquered tortoise shell. And when I came back, he had decoupaged the inside with these weird surreal images from a 60s fashion magazine. And it was just the touch that was needed. As usual, my annoying husband was right. We combined two apartments and we got an extra foyer and I turned it into a clubby library. I love this space. The overall feel is kind of like a very loose gentleman's club, but kind of twisted on its head. I went with this dark smoky blue wall and it makes it feel very, very luxurious. I made these cool brass horse head lamps that look very traditional and kind of equestrian French. Everything I do starts in my pottery studio. When people ask me what I do, I usually say I'm a potter, but I suppose I've morphed into a hyphenate. I am a potter slash decorator slash designer retailer. I love to work with friends of mine who are applied artists. I worked with my friend John Paul Philippe to create a site-specific mural. It's trippy, it's surreal, but there's also a surprise to it. It's kind of a transition between the public part of the house and our bedroom. Check it out. This bedroom is a dream, and it makes me feel like a loose hedonistic rock star. Sadly, I'm anything but. I wanted the entire space to feel ethereal, so all the furnishings kind of float in this white envelope. Wherever you look, there's something really cool to look at. The one drag about our room, the windows face a brick wall. Wah, wah. So I got my friend, John Paul Philippe, to make these paintings that were sort of an abstracted take on eyes, and I hung them in front of the windows. The eyes kind of set the tone for this room, and as a result, there's actually eyes staring back at you wherever you look. Danny Bogley painted eyes in the working fireplace. There's an incredible Nicola eye lamp, which is one of my favorite pieces in this house. Animals are great. They're always welcome in a room, but I like them in brass. The dressing room is an extension of the bedroom. It also doubles as my office. Blue plays so beautifully with every tone of blue. So our dressing room is basically an homage to blue and all its miracle hues. From a blue and white carpet, teal closets. It's anchored by one of my favorite pieces of furniture of all time, Pierre Paulin's iconic ribbon chair done in blue. I've always said that a good decorator should be like a slimming mirror for their clients. They should reflect a space that captures the spirit of the clients, but at their slimmest, most glamorous, most bold, and most memorable. I think that's what I did in Simon and my Greenwich Village apartment. Thanks so much for coming. I feel like that would be such a fun place to wake up in every day. Inspired by anything on the show you've seen so far? If so, we've curated collections on Amazon so you can shop the look. Just visit Amazon.com slash shop slash open house TV. Coming up after the break. Can we talk about this wallpaper? No one can believe I actually sleep in this bedroom, but in fact, I do, and I do it beautifully. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Now we're in the Flower District with designer Drew McGookin. Drew is no stranger to taking risks and his exuberant live-work loft is a tribute to his unique aesthetic and life. He explains how. Hi, 
Hi, my name is Drew. I am principal designer at Drew McGookin Interiors and welcome to my home in the heart of Chelsea's famous flower district. My home stretches across 2,000 square feet in a full floor live work loft space. And the overarching design ideals here, I basically took 10 years of my life, edited it down, layered it all together, and now I call it home. And I can't wait to show you around. The first space you walk into is my DMC Design Atelier. This space actually used to be the home of my company until we moved across the street. The office is located nearest to the windows because the bright light and the beautiful cityscape brings such an exciting, inspiring element to our work. Speaking of exciting, uh, did you notice the taxi cab yellow? I really wanted a pop. I wanted something that felt saturated, happy, fun, but also mellowed out as a neutral. So I went for mellow yellow. Since we often host client presentations in this space, we installed a cork wall. And when we're presenting, we remove the artwork, remove the accessories, and that's where we actually pin up client fabrics to present to them for their homes. Since the biggest, boldest main windows of the space are at the front, we decided to use open bookcases as a divider between the living space and the workspace. The idea is carve out space, but don't lose the light. So this is the living room, and this space is a real mashup. So one of the design intentions really that I wrapped around this space was thinking about the lens of work that I'd done for clients and picked favorite moments and created myself a piece. The art in this space really centers around Aboriginal and photography. I've been collecting Aboriginal art for a number of years and have some really classic, beautiful photographs as well. And then I just layer in stuff I love. This space is not only about custom pieces that I designed, but I also layered in vintage pieces, classic Mies van der Rohe Daybed by Knoll, ceramic lamps by Martz. I really wanted to add that element of timelessness to the space. A kitchen and a dining room are a natural duo, but what's great in this space is I actually used the dining room as a transition from a more formal living space into the kitchen space. And I anchored it by recessing this bar cabinet into the wall with a mirrored back to reflect light from the front. The big design moment here is bringing the copper wall down onto the island. Ultimately, the goal is to create a warm, creative space to enjoy entertaining friends and family and for me to enjoy spending time here. Welcome to my master bedroom. No one can believe I actually sleep in this bedroom under this skylight, but in fact, I do, and I do it beautifully. And no one can believe that I actually have two life-size portraits of myself, but I do. Can we talk about this wallpaper? The genius behind this wallpaper is all of these patterns start from an actual painting, and this is one that I fell in love with minute one. The bed is actually a piece that I designed for a client on the Upper East Side, and I liked it so much in their space, I made one for myself. In the famous words of Ariana Grande, I'm a, I'm a need space. Behind this door, my walk-in wardrobe. Thank you for joining me today. I'm hoping you'll take away a few tips on how years of collecting can layer together in a beautiful way to create a wonderful home space. We are sticking with the subject of color in our next property in Hell's Kitchen. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Open House NYC. Now we're in Hell's Kitchen with Tracy Stern, an artist, designer, and all-around bon vivant. Stern's home is an eclectic ode to disco chic with touches of industrial grit. It's designed to make you feel like you've been invited to the most exclusive party in the world. Hi, I'm Tracy Stern, an artist and designer. Welcome to our home in Hell's Kitchen in New York City. I can't wait to show you around. This space is actually three different spaces in one. This lounge area, a workspace, and this cozy reading nook. The curved step up really gives this space a sense of ceremony. I echoed that sensuous curve in the mid-century swivel chairs opposite this oversized sofa. These dark black walls and the organic grass cloth really make these colors come alive. In case you can't tell, color is everything to me. 
I also love mixing metals, which a lot of people don't do, specifically silver and gold. Besides my jewelry, I also did that with the silver coffee table and the gold chandeliers. But the highlight definitely is this birdcage bookcase. It's just such a memorable way to display your books. Though I've never been a club person, I wanted to make you feel like you were stepping into the most exclusive club where absolutely anything goes. How could you not love this room? This is my favorite room in the entire house. It's everything I love, like the play of color, the contrast of materials, the art, and all the fun elements, like boxing gloves and skateboards. I designed the wallpaper to be an iridescent throwback to the psychedelic 70s. I wanted this room to be glamorous enough for adults, but playful enough for kids. Your home should be a place where you can explore the things you love. I love color and contrast, and I wanted to celebrate it here. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at our home. It combines industrial chic and disco glam. Thank you all very much for coming. Thanks for watching. Like what you see on the show? Well, be sure to subscribe to our channel. We have so many more beautiful homes to share. It's all about love. Share these homes, you know?